The idea that I present to you today is spiritual revival within deaf America. A spiritual awakening. My view of this is that the deaf community throughout America has different issues that needs attention. Equal rights, accessibility, communication access, education. There are many different issues that we continue to struggle with since Clark arrived here in America. We have struggled with these issues throughout the ages. Throughout American history, we have seen some successes, and we have seen periods where we have been very frustrated in our struggles with citizens, where we have been neglected, and our ideas have not been given attention. Recently, it seems that we have noticed several successes. ASL classes have gained in popularity throughout the educational institutions in America. Also, we have seen and heard, I avoid using the sign here, but I'm reframing that to say we have seen stories of more and more deaf individuals that they not learn ASL, and that every time we make one step forward, we take one step backward, and our struggles continue. So this is a struggle, this is an issue. When we look at the black community throughout history, we can see their struggle, their experience, and their successes. In looking at that, since I myself have been involved in the religious aspect of church, and I have worked as a Bible translator into American Sign Language, that has helped me to visualize the words and the historical meaning of the Jewish population and the teachings of the Bible throughout history. And that has impacted me greatly. The idea that I pose to you is that, are we missing something? And is that God? The reason I bring this up, if you look at the black community, slavery and that period of history was awful, something that we cannot truly understand. But how did they keep alive? How did that culture survive? they looked toward God for salvation. Their spirituals, their music, throughout 400 years of bondage and slavery, their spirituality was given to them through hope. Through hope that one day they would be free. That type of spirituality is awesome. And to know that in our world's history, any dramatic change in thinking, in social, political venues, when you look behind the change, there is a religious aspect to that change. For example, here in America, people were oppressed by the King of England saying that you must be part of the king's church. And they said, see you later, we're headed to America, so that they could pursue religious freedom, freedom to worship whomever, whatever we wanted, without anyone telling us what to do. That's how America was founded. And then we have the age of enlightenment, from the 1700s to the early 1800s, where people were again awakened. In the 1600s, they started focusing on the American Revolution. Once America was a new country, then they started looking toward religion, spirituality, and serving mankind. 
One of the positive aspects of this period was the establishment of the School for the Deaf. And I applaud that. Gallaudet was a minister himself, and he traveled the world and came to the United States. There were trends, obviously, often established by ministers. When I was at the Nebraska School for the Deaf, William Frisch, who graduated from the Indiana School for the Deaf. Anybody here from Indiana? Go Indiana. We in Nebraska thanked the folks in, in, the, in, the, in Indiana because he brought instruction to Nebraska. Frisch learned from Clerk, brought that to Indiana that was then brought to Nebraska. Throughout this legacy, there were two deaf parents with a child that met this preacher who had a deaf child, and they were asking him how they could pursue education. Because at the time, Omaha was not a large community, and they did not have a lot of resources. So, in South Dakota, at the School for the Deaf, that school was also established by a religious minister. Education often was founded through religious purposes so that they could read, write, and understand the Bible. That was the goal. At that time, deaf individuals worshipped the religious community. There was discussion back and forth with Hutchkins and Laura Clark about all of the history that happened throughout the deaf community. And during their presentation in 1913, they stopped to share the story of Jesus, his birth, his crucifixion, how he was buried, and how he rose again from the dead. And that story, that opportunity that he took in 1913 was filmed. Robert McGregor, who was the first NAD president in 1913, he was filmed, and there were two movies that he made. The first movie was sarcastic, or being making fun of oralism, and the second film that he was producing was a lay sermon, which had nothing to do with deafness, but he was giving a sermon as a brotherhood under the leadership of our God. And he closed with the Lord's Prayer. Now, one critical thing. It's Vince, who shared with us a very important message. And the message that he shared was noblest a noblest gift to us from God. And he quoted often from the Bible, those of us who were oral were false prophets. That was his quote. And he called those individuals who once knew us and forgot us pharaohs that did not know Joseph. So, I say to you, our deaf leaders who use the Bible and quote the Bible to make their point. And at that point, we looked at oralism, taking over schools and education throughout America where sign language was forbidden. But spirituality in the deaf community was extremely high, was very cohesive, and sign language prevailed. And many of those people went to church. At the Nebraska School for the Deaf, after it closed, we established a museum which we continue to operate. But with deaf senior citizens passing on, they gave us their memorabilia. One of the things that I was able to look at had nothing to do with the School for the Deaf, but wow. It was related to religious artifacts. 
And what I was really astounded to learn, there was the All Souls Church from Nebraska. And from that particular church in 1910 or in the 1920s, there was a deaf pastor named Habenstab, who was very famous within that community. And he was well known throughout the Midwest in establishing many deaf church congregations. One of those was in Omaha. He had a guest speaker by the last name of Cloud, who was also the NAD president at the time. So look, an NAD president, Robert McGregor, and then the second NAD president, Cloud, was also actively involved in the religious deaf community. So all of these church-related events that I recall as a young boy, I went to the Lutheran church, where there were hundreds and hundreds of congregants. Recently, I went to that same church to celebrate their 75-year anniversary of the building, and it was so sad. There were so few people sitting in the pews. That made me stop and wonder. Okay, there are many things in our lives that we want to succeed with in terms of education, Congress, legislation, equal opportunity to employment, so many things that we're moving forward on. And we've had a good 20 years. We've had lots of people fighting battles for us in these issues. But have we seen one major success? We've seen schools for the deaf start to close, one after another, Nebraska being one of them. And one thing that comes to mind is an article that was written by a preacher by the name of Lloyd Ogilvy. He was a chaplain at the university, at US Congress, and he was writing about sailing with one of his friends. And the wind died down, so there was no wind in his sails. But he saw another sailboat off the way, and they were saying, oh, no wind. And what they started to do was blow the sails themselves. That was Lloyd looking at those other guys blowing the wind into their own sails. Interesting. The Jewish word, rock, means wind. That also represents God's spirit in the Jewish community. So, applying that to the black community, they use their church leaders. Their church leaders, their pastors, their salaries were paid. The people went to work, but the pastors had the ability and the time to raise spirit. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor as well. There were many people within the black community who were leaders that were also pastors. And at that time in our history, Martin Luther King benefited many people. You're a minister. You should have focused to the gospel and spreading the gospel of the Lord. But Martin Luther King's response to that criticism was, Believe in what I do, and what I do is an extension of Jesus' teachings. Look at Jesus. Look at what he taught. Be kind, be sympathetic, help the poor, remove oppression. In biblical times, there were many examples of where God struck down people who oppressed the innocent, the poor, God warned these peoples, no longer oppress these cultures. I will punish you. And God's children, the Jews, looked to God, worship me. See if I will not then open the gates 
of heaven and bless you all. So that meant that we could save ourselves by blowing into these sails. We could ask God to help us. And God will bless us. A friend of mine and I were recently talking about their favorite Bible verse. Immediately, my favorite Bible verse that came to mind was 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, which says, If you people are sinners, humble ourselves, move forward, look to God, ask for help, and he shall engage and help us as sinners and heal our country. That applies to the deaf community. If we all acknowledge that there is a God and we unite in spirit, ignite that fire within our soul and ask God to heal our country, he will come. Now I say to you that you might be interested in thinking of how many deaf churches are in the United States. Are there many? I don't have a number to give you. But for example, in Omaha, from Omaha to Des Moines, Iowa, and then up to Lincoln, Nebraska, down to Sioux Falls, and up to Kansas City, in that geographic region, there are eight deaf coda pastors in different churches just in that small area in the Midwest. And I would say probably 30 people go to each of those churches. And when you add up that total, that's almost 300 people. Those people who attend church go to church every Sunday. And the pastor has an audience every Sunday. Now I propose to you a challenge to deaf churches. Lead us. Lead us like the black churches and the black ministers of the black community. Deaf pastors, coda pastors, where are you? We need them. We need their spiritual guidance. We need them to raise us. Those pastors, their incomes are paid. But are they busy? As an extension of Jesus' mission? Do they raise our spirits every Sunday? And I close with a prayer. Our Father, the deaf people who are suffering, who need employment, who've had discrimination, our children who want education through ASL, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Something as simple as that, Sunday after Sunday, you would see change. Deaf people would have fire within them. Their passion would grow. I challenge you, go to church, pray, ask your personal, spiritual self how you can progress, but look toward God so that we can experience full life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness promised to us through our founding fathers and forever in heaven promised to us by God, our Father. Thank you.